Hey everybody, and we're in Mark chapter 7 today. It's a Friday as I record this, so it's a red day for me. I'm remembering everyone deployed and praying for them. I hope you are as well every Friday. Uh, today we're in Mark 7. I'm looking at verse 20. Jesus has so much to share with us in this first 20 plus verses. And, and specifically, he's challenging the Pharisees on their whole rule approach to life. They they had rules for everything, and they had very detailed rules that they had figured out from the original uh, plan or uh, law of God through Moses. And so they're challenging Jesus and his disciples about not washing their hands ceremonially. He gets on their case about how out of their mouth comes praise, but out of their, out of their heart comes evil. And then he even says, you nullify all the truth of God's commands by all your list of rules. And then finally, in verse verse 20 and plus of chapter 7, Jesus has the disciples with him. And he says, don't you get it? What comes out of a man is what makes him unclean, not what goes into a man. It's not about the food you eat that makes you unclean to God. It's about what comes out of your mouth that makes you unclean to God. It's what comes out of your actions, out of your heart, out of your thoughts. For from within, out of a man's heart, come evil thoughts and behaviors. And then he gives a list, sexual morality, greed, adultery, idolatry, and so forth. And Jesus isn't trying to say there's a, not a need for rules, but he's trying to say rules don't fix hearts. Only God can do that. I grew up in a house that had rules. Now, not a lot of rules, at least I don't think so. Um, and they weren't bad rules or wrong rules. My mom did a really good job of uh, centering on truth instead of just rules and behaviors. But I remember one specific rule that I just did not like probably more than that, but one that I can remember was the S word we were not allowed to say in the house. <laughs> and no, it's not the S word that many people say nowadays. The S word in our, in my mom's house was sucks, which you probably hear that. And you don't even think that's a bad word. I didn't think it was either in my culture, my generation, but my mom did. And she didn't want that word used in the house. And she made that very clear to us. And I complied until there came a day I slipped and said it because I'd been saying it during at school with all my friends because that was a common vernacular. But my mom heard that and it did not go so well for me. I remember the taste of soap in my mouth very clearly. Now, I share that with you, not because that's a bad rule or a good rule. I want you to see that her rule did not change my heart. I still had the desire to say the word. In fact, the rule made me focus on the word more. That didn't help me at all. What I needed was a change of heart, that the words we use can have a positive impact or a negative impact. I needed to focus on the truth of making my mouth holy before people and before God, instead of what words I'm allowed to say and not allowed to say. And that's kind of what Jesus is saying. You can argue about what sexual behavior is permitted, but the fact is any, any sexual behavior that's outside the truth of God is immorality. That's what Jesus is saying. I gave, gave you commands and you've turned them into a rule set. I gave you the commands about loving me and making God your only God that have no other gods before me, have no other idols set before you. And, and you've turned it into a set of lists of rules about what you can and can't do that don't really help you focus on God. Jesus is saying the same thing that my mom was trying to say. You're designed to be holy. So live holy lives. And don't turn it into a list of rules. I think that is a crucial piece of what we're missing today in our culture. We need to quit worrying about what's what's on our list and not on our list and start going back to the truth of God because the truth of God is what measures a man's heart. And that's what Jesus is saying. It, it starts with your thoughts. It starts with your heart. What goes on in your heart needs to be clean. And here's the problem. You can't clean it on your own, nor can I. We need Jesus to clean our hearts. Today, as we finish up this week, I encourage you to have a little one-on-one -on -one time with Jesus and ask him to reveal in your heart those things that you are doing incorrectly or even evilly against him. I know it may not be things that other people think are evil, 
But the fact is, he's the one that gets to judge. And he wants you to be designed with purity and with holiness, because that's how he created you. So ask Jesus to do a heart examination. Check your words. Check your actions. Check your thoughts. Check your faith. And let him change your heart so that what comes out of your mouth is pleasing to God. Have a great day. We'll see you again next week.